Hello, in this week we are going to learn how to download data directly from NCBI through R. So in this online tutorial you'll get to see how to get started. So the first thing I'm going to do, and this should be your first step every single time you are doing something new in the bioinformatics class, you're going to go to File New Project. Start a new directory, a new project, and I'm going to put it on my desktop. I'm actually going to name this with today's date. So I'm doing this a little bit before you, March 24th, and then I'm going to call the, pro, the folder get March 24th Get Data so that I know what I did that day. When I create the new project, I'm doing a couple things. I'm automatically changing my working directory. So you can see in the files lower right corner of R Studio, it shows that my working directory is C, Users, Desktop, um, and then on the desktop is a folder. It will be easy for me to drag any information that I download to this folder. And I also know that I'm starting with a clean slate. Every file that I want, I can make sure that it's here. Um, and I don't have a lot of extra files to make it difficult to see what I'm working with. So what we're going to do for most of the unit on bioinformatics and looking at SNP chip data is we want to be able to have not just code that executes the function and runs in the console, but we want to have a script that we can actually share with other people. This is something that you'll be able to upload to your assignments. Um, so you'll be able to upload your .r files to Canvas. And it's also a way for you to keep track of your work. So if every single day that you're doing an in-class assignment or the equivalent of an in-class assignment with these online tutorials, you create a folder and a new working directory, you can easily go back to those scripts and stitch pieces of code together for your final project. So before I start writing any code, I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to use the number sign or hashtag symbol to write a comment. I'm going to put my name and today's date. And I'm going to have a second line comment that just says what the script does. So this script downloads sequence data from NCBI. I'm going to save the script. I'm going to call it get data and it automatically saves as the .r file type. Um, and now if I wanted to submit this script on Canvas, it, there's a file here. So it's something that I can, on the Canvas browser, go and select and submit, just like you'll submit your final script um, for today's in-class assignment for this online tutorial. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to download a package that has a lot of functions that are going to be useful for this project um, and gives me the ability to, instead of individually downloading data from NCBI, like going and one by one searching accession numbers, it gives me the ability to download a lot of different accession numbers. Our Unit 1 project has been published on NCBI, so we're going to actually use our own accession numbers to learn this tool. The tool is called APE, so I'm going to go to Tools, Install Packages, and I'm going to type APE. This is a package that's available on the CRAN repository. We'll learn later in the week how to install packages from other tools like Bioconductor. I'm going to click Install, and I'm going to wait for the caret symbol to pop up in my console so that I know that I'm ready to load this package. So once I've installed the package in my script, I can run the library command. Now that the library has been loaded, I have not only the base R functions, I have all of the functions that are defined as part of the APE package. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define a variable. And this variable is going to keep track of all of the sequence numbers that are used for our original project. Um, so I'm going to make a character vector of the accession numbers we posted for unit one. I can put together my IDs as a new character vector. I can use the C function 
to type out individual numbers. So I'll just do the first two using the C function so you can see how that would work. Uh, they do need to be in single quotes so that they're recognized as the correct format as characters. You can see CHR 1 to 2, so there's two elements in this vector, um, and they're both accession numbers. Now I'm going to set up a command to download the FASTA data in a list from NCBI, well more specifically from GenBank. You can see the sequences is the new variable that I'm creating. This is going to be a list format. The function that's available in the APE program is read.genbank. Um, and then the first thing that is going to go into the read genbank function is a list of accession numbers. The sequence names are also going to be that list of accession numbers. And we should be able to run this on the first two sequences. You can see that we get a list of two. And what's on the list of two? two different variables. So now we can do the final step which is writing a FASTA file. And we're going to use the write.dna function. Alright, so now we've made a really simple script that is able to look at a FASTA file for two sequences. What I'd like you to do as part of today's online tutorial is change this script so it doesn't just download MT103164 and MT103613, but it downloads all sequences up to MT103183. That will give you our full classes worth of data.